Okay, welcome. Uh, my name is Renee Schrift, and on behalf of McClanahan, I'm just going to introduce um, our topic, um, results of a bedding dryer. Uh, thank you for attending our session, and also thank you for Dairy Strong Committee for giving us the opportunity to be able to present this information to you. Um, as you know, McClanahan has been known for sand separation, uh, high sand recovery, uh, cow comfort, uh, good cow health results, good milk production has always been our goal and our emphasis. Um, so in the last couple years, we've been focusing a little bit more on how to make recycled sand better, um, also how to make recovered solids better, so dairymen, such as your Ourselves can have better results in the barn and higher milk quality. And we have a case study I'm going to show you uh, right now. Look at dairy farming as literally one of the most sustainable types of agriculture out there. Sand recycling is just a really good example of one of the things that we're big believers in. We've been doing this for quite a while. All the free stalls are bedded with digested, separated solids. I look at it as being a proactive thing and I'm making everybody else's job on the farm easier. We've been big believers of sand. Uh, started in the early 80s. Well, with the number of cows we're milking here, that was about 150,000 tons of sand handled every year. It was taking a full-time crew to move all of this sand around. A lot of diesel fuel, a lot of wear on the machinery. We knew as we were expanding, we had to come up with a method that we could not only recycle, but really had to have high-quality sand to put back under our ladies. Really happy with what we've stumbled upon here. It's been a, a team effort with McClan Hand. We've got a sand that really does what we set out to do with sand in the first place, keep cows around for forever, keep our milk quality within the top one, two percent anywhere in the world, and just not have to ever buy bedding. We have about 1,100 total dairy cows. Standards of what used to be good now is average. Being in the dairy industry long term, I didn't want to be average. Anytime you can reduce stress, everything gets better. We needed to see improvements in less treated cows here. We wanted to see improvement in cell count. We wanted to see improvement in reproduction. We're just trying to make a better system. This seemed like it was the missing link that we were looking for. We put a, an end loader bucket in in the morning. We put an end loader bucket in somewhere around noon. And that's it, it just runs. And it's really not taking a lot of manpower. The entire process from leaving the barn to actually coming out the other end of the dryer ready to be placed back under the cows is about four hours on average. So a pretty incredible time frame to get an awful lot of stuff done. The one thing that's always bugged me is our average age of our herd is too young. Kind of a lot of it was because our cull rate was too high. A year ago, in our dairy, we had 25 cases of toxic mastitis. So far this year, with the dryer running, we haven't any. Our goal here is to have less than one quarter of one percent at any given time in a treat pen. Since going to the dried sand, there's no doubt about it, we consistently hit that number. That's a pretty cool feat on 8,000 cows. So far, everything looks really good. Cows are more comfortable on it. It's softer, it doesn't freeze in the stalls. Uh, the cows in the barn look cleaner. Obviously, when you stay at a hotel, you don't want to lie on wet sheets. Same thing with our cows. We were kind of surprised at how dry we got it. So here we've got this continuously reusable closed loop system of sand for about 20 cents on the dollar versus buying new sand. And that's not even including the costs that it would take to dispose of the dirty sand. I like the idea of working with a major company that has a name and a reputation. They had had a local dealer. I would be able to get parts and maintenance and expertise into keeping this thing running for a long time. There's no doubt about it. McClanahan has all the experience in the mining industry. If it can hold up in the mining industry, our industry makes it kind of look like a cakewalk.
So again, the reason why we got into this is to make bedding better. Um, as you can see, we have basically two systems in Wisconsin, Lee Kennard and uh, uh, Lee Jensen. Uh, I'm not sure why there's two Lees, but those were the two first, so it's pretty neat. Uh, each side, one on one side of the state, one on the other, one's bedding on sand, of course, and the other one's on manure solids. And uh, we're pretty proud of the systems and um, trying to keep a close eye on them, see how they go. Uh, Lee's been in for uh, two years now, and uh, Lee Kennard's and Lee Jensen's been a little over a year. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Rob Plank. Rob Plank is our global product manager for agricultural equipment at McClanahan Corporation, and he's going to discuss the technical side of the dryer, and then following will be Lee Kennard, uh, Kennard Farms, and he's going to talk about his results. Thank you. So thanks, Renee, and good morning, everyone. I'm going to talk a little bit about the technical side of things. It'll probably take me 10 or 15 minutes, and then Lee's going to wrap it up uh, with the results, as Renee mentioned, and then we'll have some time for questions. But the one thing to think about as we go through this is really when you're talking about your bedding, whether it's sand or whether it's manure, moisture, in either case, moisture is the one thing we can control. Sometimes we can't control the food, but we can control the moisture in the, bacteria, in the, in the bedding, which then helps control the bacteria. So a little bit of overview of what I'm going to talk about. I'll give you a background quickly. And if it sounds like I'm talking fast, I am going to be talking fast because there's a lot of information that I want to cover because I want to give Lee plenty of time for what he has to say. So if you miss something and I talk too fast, just talk to me afterwards and we can talk about it. Uh, Why do we get into drying? The concept of the rotary dryer and then a little bit in how it works. We have a couple different product models depending on what we're drying. Uh, and then we'll go through typical system operation and some basic costs. And then uh, we'll wrap up with uh, the results from Kindred Farms. And so why would we get into drying? So if you look at the life cycle of a bacteria, and really when you're talking about managing your bedding, you're often talking about managing the bacteria in the bedding. Because if you keep the bacteria at a low level, you may have better bedding for your cows. And so with sand bedding, it's different than, than manure bedding. But it, if you look at this diagram here, the bacteria need three things to really survive and to thrive. They need heat, they need food, and they need moisture. And if you take any one of those away, it, it breaks that cycle of that bacteria. And so um, we're looking at ways with sand systems and how do we manage the food, which would be the organic material that's left over in the sand, but also how do we manage that moisture that's in it. With the heat, we can't do much about that because the cow lays down in the stall. She's going to supply that heat. But the, but the food and the moisture are two things that we can control. And you eliminate any one of them, you can eliminate uh, the, or at least reduce the bacteria that's in the bedding. So that's a bit about managing the bacteria. But so talking to our sand customers, they were asking for several things. They want, they want clean sand. So they want something low organic material. And like I said, that's the food for the bacteria. So we're producing clean sand. Uh, we introduced dewatering screens a few years ago, which takes that sand moisture down from about 20% off the sand systems down to about 12. So it helped minimize the handling costs that are associated with the sand. And then finally, uh, today we're going to talk about drying that sand. So now we can take that dewatered sand and we can dry it and they can reuse it immediately after it comes out of the sand system. But then we also, the last couple of years, started talking with uh, dairymen who were using manure bedding and the struggles, we were listening to the struggles that they were having, how do we manage this bedding better? And the one thing that uh, often came up was, how do I get my bedding drier? How do I put in a, a, a bigger, more powerful screw press? How do I put in compost or whatever? What technology can get me a drier product, a better product to put under the cows? So we got to, we got to looking, and there was really no company that was marketing any kind of drying system into the ag industry at the time. This was about four years ago. And this kind of a drying system really fit our capabilities and what we were already offering. We already, as Renee mentioned, focused on bedding and manure and sand. So this really fit what we could do. So we said, we think this is a really good thing. Um, some of the advantages of, of better bedding. The first thing is cow health, uh, which leads to you have know, higher milk production, lower call rates, uh, lower hospital pens. You have fewer, fewer sick cows you're dealing with and your milk quality increases because of these things, reduce somatic cell count. And the one thing that was mentioned in the video is, if you can take sand right off of your sand system and, and put it right back under the stalls, you're not, 
it reduces a lot of the handling costs. Same with manure solids. You're not taking that windrowing, composting. You're taking those solids and putting them right back under the cow. So there's a handling cost associated with that that we can really minimize with the drying system. And really, overall, you're not putting nearly as much moisture back in the barn. And really, that moisture is not going just in the barn. It's going in the stalls, right where the cow's going to lay. As Lee mentioned in that video, you wouldn't want to lay on wet sheets in the hotel. We're bringing a lot less moisture back in the barns with the drying system. So we started looking at what technologies are available. Do we need to reinvent the wheel or can we take some technology that's already out there in the marketplace and really tailor it for the, for the ag market, for the dairy? So we started looking at these different technologies. There's rotary dryers, that's really the workhorse in the drying world. There's fluidized bed dryers, flash tube dryers, belt conveyors. I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on these. Infrared, electric, and then there's others. So there's a whole host of ways to dry materials depending on what your goals are. So we looked at all these different technologies and said, what do we want to do? We really, we want a method to dry this sand and manure bedding that's going to have the greatest chance of long-term success. We need something that we can put on a dairy farm that is manageable, um, something that, that, that we can put our eyes on and say, I understand this, something that we can maintain. And really what we landed on was the rotary dryers for several different reasons. As I mentioned, it's a proven technology. So these are really the workhorses in, in the drying world. They've been around a long time. We knew that there was at least one dryer in Wisconsin at the time that was successfully using it for manure bedding. So we said, okay, so it's a proven technology, very effective. And so with the rotary dryer, it can handle fluctuations in feed material, whether it be moisture, whether it be the, the input into it. It's really effective at drying the material, even with fluctuations. It's a simple technology. So it's something you can wrap your head around. You can look at it and say, it's a rotating drum. It's sitting on some trunnions. It's got a drive. It has a burner. It's, it's simple for us to, um, in terms of supporting it, it's also a simple technology for the dairy to uh, maintain. Very versatile. So it can handle different bedding materials. We wanted something that, one technology that we could put on a farm. If they were on manure bedding, if they were on sand bedding, if they had a nutrient separation system and they wanted to dry sludge, it was the same technology to do, the, do uh, the drying that we needed to do. Also, it's a technology that if you have a, a digester on your farm, you say, I got some biogas, it's scrubbed, can I use it? We can use biogas to, to fuel the burner. We can use natural gas, diesel, propane. So it's versatile in terms of the energy source that we need. It's also robust, so we can design the system. It can handle sand and it can handle manure bedding. So it's a system that can last. And also it's an efficient way of drying materials. It's been around a long time, as I mentioned. It's not maybe the very top in terms of efficiency, but it's definitely not even close to the bottom. So it's somewhere, it's a, it's a good efficient system. So a few pieces that make up a rotary dryer, if you haven't seen one. Um, this is basically uh, what it looks like. We have a support frame with ours. This sets us apart, a little bit apart from the other, other people in the marketplace that have rotary dryers. When it shows up on your farm, it's gonna show, show up on a frame. So we have the burner, we have the, the drum, and we have the product collection system. It's sitting on the frame and it shows up for fast install. Um, each one has a burner and a furnace. This is where the heat comes from. We have the rotating drum. Um, an exhaust fan and duct work, so the exhaust fan is pulling the air through the system and exhausting the, the moisture out. Uh, the drum drive, and then we have a product collection system then that pulls the, the product out of the airstream um, and into the conveyance system. So a few pieces that make our system a little different. Uh, we have a bolt-on tire design, and so over time that tire will wear and eventually if it needs replaced, instead of torching it off, uh, we can unbolt it, bolt new ones on, easily replaced. We have an overhead drum drive, so our drive sits on top of the drum as opposed to on the side on the floor. So it really reduces the footprint and reduces stress on the tire and roller. We have access doors so that we can get into it. If there's some kind of maintenance, we want to inspect it, we pull the doors off, we can look in and get in there. I mentioned it was factory pre-assembled, so it shows up on a frame. There's a lot of the wiring's already done. The gas train is often mounted there um, on the frame, so it makes it easier for setup. And it's customizable. So we can, 
in a sand system, we can put bolt-on flights, we can put ceramic liners in the cyclone. That's the kind of stuff we can customize where a manure dryer, we wouldn't do that. And then safety. So one of the big questions that we often get is, is it safe for me to run a dryer on my farm? It seems like there's a huge fire hazard. Well, there's always a potential for fire since there's a, you know, it's, it's running hot. There's a big burner there. It comes standard with the fire suppression system. We, we pipe some water in, so if we get an overheat uh, alert, it can send water in there and shut the system down. And then we design all our equipment around OSHA guidelines. Uh, a typical uh, drying process, we would have wet product that's fed into the inlet right in front between the burner and the, and the rotary drum. It enters the drum and that's where it's exposed to the hot air, so it's constantly rotating and tumbling through that air stream and showering down through. Uh, the fan's at the end of the system, and so it's constantly pulling the heat and the material through, helping to aid with the movement of the material through the process. And then we have the dried product that discharges through our product collection system. So if you have a, a manure, if we have a manure system, and we want to dry manure, we would offer a triple pass dryer. Triple pass is great for light organic material. And what it is, it's really, um, as the name implies, we have material comes right in the center of the drum, but then instead of exiting directly, it comes back and makes three passes through before it exits. What that does, it creates a bit of a torturous path for this light organic material and helps uh, retain it in the drum and it gives you a more uniform product. We can also run at lower inlet temperatures and outlet temperatures for a little bit higher efficiencies. This would be uh, the system at Five Star Dairy. It's a triple pass dryer. They're processing about 1.7 tons an hour through it. The whole system in terms of horsepower with the conveyors in, the conveyance out is about 60 horsepower. And we're running, this system is set up where we can switch from biogas to propane, to natural gas. They switch a couple valves. They sometimes will run a mixture of biogas and natural gas, depending on uh, time of year. And then some, some basic dimensions for the system. We have six different models that we offer, ranging in size from one and a half tons per hour um, up to about five tons per hour. This would be for the triple pass dryers. Single pass, this is ideal for the sand and the sludge applications. The, the sticky materials or the abrasive materials. We run higher inlet and outlet temperatures, a little bit lower capital cost because it's just, it's a simpler way of drying. The system we have at Kindred Farms, he's uh, processing 12 to 14 tons an hour through the system. And I estimate there's about 80 horsepower for the conveyance in, conveyance out, plus the drying system. They're running natural gas, um, and the dimensions there, 46 by eight and a half by 20. And then several different models we offer, ranging from about two and a half tons an hour system at the smallest up to about 20 tons an hour. So you're thinking, okay, what information do you need to, to size a drying system? Really, it comes down to what material, first of all, are we drying? Is it manure, is it sand, is it some other type of material? The tons per hour that, that were needed to dry, and the one thing that we found out um, after we started drying sand is the sand uses actually went up in the, in, the, in, the, in the barn because this dry sand now, it flows. So it's harder to keep in the stall. So um, something to keep in mind in terms of sand usage is it may increase in the, in the farm if you go from a damp sand into a dry sand. But these are the numbers that we use for sizing a system. And then the desired moisture. So, in the sand, we typically take it down to about 2% or less. And with manure, if we get any lower than about 50%, it just turns to dust and it makes for problems managing it in the stalls and in the barn. And then what's your energy source? Is it natural gas, propane, diesel, or biogas? So we can run on any of these different energy sources. So with that information, we can, we can plug it in and we can, we can uh, show you some estimated costs for running the system in terms of electricity and natural gas. If you have some, uh, if you can share those costs with us, we can run through some numbers and, and help you do that. The one thing that's interesting here, I mentioned about not bringing more water, uh, reducing the amount of water that comes back into barn. So this would be the system at Five Star. They're running 1.7 tons an hour of manure bedding through the system. 
and they're eliminating about 2,000 gallons a day of water that would end up back in the stalls is now being discharged out in, in with the air. Seems like a significant number. And so in summary, um, drier bedding is better bedding, uh, whether it's manure or sand. Uh, we have results that really prove this. The rotary drying technology, it's, it's proven technology that's simple and very effective. And McClanahan, we have a team of, of technical sales persons and engineer whose primary focus is manure and sand bedding. I mean, that's really what we focus on. This just really fits with what uh, our business is. So with that, I'll turn it over to Lee. Switch this for you. Okay, thank you, Rob. Um, I am Lee Kennard. I am one of the family members that owns and operates Kennard Farms. So we're a dairy and crop farm located in northeast Wisconsin. Um, had the good pleasure here over about the last six years of working with Renee and Rob as the sand bedding dryer was developed out at our farm. It was quite a, quite a challenge, but it's been a pretty good experience. I think before I go into the specifics of the sand drying and, and um, how it works, et cetera, I'm gonna tell a little bit about the farm. It might help make a little more sense as to why we went the route we did. So just a little bit about us, um, you know, we're a fifth generation, we're actually located on land that's been in our family for five generations, both on our mother's side and our father's side, um, so long presence in the community, and really our parents were very, very forward thinking, um, innovation, sustainability was their mantra long, long, long before um, it became popular to be a mantra. And no doubt about it, um, I think they did a pretty good job of passing that on to the next generation. Uh, matter of fact, our 8,000 cows that we milk today are mostly the direct descendants of our original 14 cows. So that's uh, kind of an interesting story. We are a registered animal breeder, so done an awful lot of sales besides raising that herd size up to the 8,000 mark. A little bit about the family. This is a, a quick portrait of some of the family members involved um, over on the far right uh, would be my brother Rod, his wife Maureen. In the middle are my sister Jackie and her husband David, all involved in the farm. This is just a little bit on where exactly we're located, give you a little bearing. I always say, hey, hold up your hand. We're right at the base of the thumb. Um, interesting fact about our newest dairy, we're located directly in the middle of that thumb. We're geographically dead center, so a little fun fact trivia. Um, don't know what you do with that, but it's neat to know. A um, couple of aerial views of the farm. This is actually what we call the home farm. So this is the farm that our parents started back in 1947. Um, designed for about 3,000 cows. Our growth pattern was really slow and steady. Um, as I said, we did most of our growth from within. So really what drove it was uh, basically land availability in our community. That barn is actually a double 36 parallel, like I said, designed for around 3,000 cows. This is what we call our site two. It's within about a half mile of our existing dairy, or our, I should say our home dairy. This is a 6,000 cow dairy. Um, cross vent, little different concepts, little different thought process went on as we were building this one. Um, we were tunnel ventilation at the home farm, had a lot of good success over the years, cooling cows that way, milking cows that way. Um, there's a 100 stall rotary over at this facility. Um, we are crop farmers, big crop farmers. Uh, we currently farm right around 10,609 at last count acres of land. Um, that is uh, really a part of our philosophy. We believe in feeding forage to cows um, and we like those 70% plus forage diets if at all possible. Um, also very big on conservation farming. Um, so we've been uh, no-tailing and cover cropping. Uh, this is our 33rd season of doing some of those things. Uh, again, with conservation, uh, we live in a region that's got a fair amount of hills and rolls. Uh, this comes into play when we start talking about, hey, how are we gonna handle sand that isn't recycled? Obviously, when you've got an average field size of 19 acres spread out over some 850 square miles, 
moving sand 12 miles down the road uh, with very little nutrient to dispose of it doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, just an overview of uh, the new milking parlor um, and a couple of the things that led to our thought process. We experimented with the sand in the early 80s, late 70s, um, kind of was on the cutting edge there and uh, loved it. But the cows loved it, I should say. The farmers, the family, we hated it. Um, it was tough on machinery. It was, it was a nightmare. There was no systems out there to utilize sand. But we just never had a sick cow. Um, we pretty much eliminated mastitis. Our somatic cell count over that uh, 25, 30, 35 year period um, has pretty consistently been below 100,000. And we've pretty consistently been somewhere in that uh, half percent or so of animals at any given time treated. During that time period also, we've really concentrated on growing the herd from within. So it wasn't that we were culling our way out of things, it was just really prevention. And sand has really treated our family very, very well. Another shot of the sand. Um, can't argue with a cow lying on sand. She just looks happy, um, which makes us as farmers happy. The problem was uh, prior to installing a McClanahan system here about a decade ago, our first one to actually recycle sand, we were just, you know, it was not sustainable. We were on a course where it's like, okay, we were at 50,000 tons of sand use a year prior to the second operation going up. Um, we went the approach of, well, hey, maybe we should start getting into the mining industry, which we did for a little while. Um, maybe mine our own sand because, gosh, we can save, you know, 50 cents, 75 cents a ton. Didn't make a lot of sense when you think back about it. Now we really needed to come up with a way to recycle that sand, which is what McClanahan brought to us here about a decade ago. Um, our sand recycling system, um, just so everybody's kind of aware, I think most people know how these work. We're pretty low tech on that, but it is a McClanahan system installed um, by Comro Sales and Equipment. And uh, we're a closed loop manure system. So what that means is we bring all of our manure to our recycling center where we take the sand out and dry it. Um, that is all done with a flush flume system at both dairies. And we're simply making, in this picture, we're simply making water for operating our flush flume using some pretty low tech separation equipment. Um, we did go to commercial pumping to charge all of our flumes, which has been a really good move. Um, Fairly, fairly normal investment. It actually wasn't even that much higher than the traditional farm pumps out there. Infrastructure was a little bit different, but obviously a lot longer wear cycles and energy efficiency. We really keep our eyeballs on how much power we're using on everything we do on the farm. This has been a pretty efficient system. Um, obviously, uh, these are the sand washers. So when the flume empties itself down in our sand recycling center, this is the machinery that is actually used for washing that sand. Prior to installing these washers in this system, our system was, or before the dryer, I should say, um, at this point, we were grabbing that sand. Um, Got to remember, at this time, we were up to about 150,000 tons of sand a year that we were putting through our barns. All of this sand was going out onto uh, a 20-acre pad with full water collection on it. This sand was being turned three times and then being brought back into the barn. Uh, coming in at about a cost of $2 and $2.25, something like that. We wore out an awful lot of payloaders, um, burnt an awful lot of fuel, a lot of labor. We were really happy with the cow results, but we really felt there had to be a better way, um, which is when we approached McClanahan and said, hey, guys, do you have a better way? So this is just a snapshot of the dryer. Um, as I said, why did we go here? You know, the inventory was crazy. At one time, we were sitting on about 250,000 tons of sand at any given time to keep dry sand under the cows. That's quite a mountain of sand, I think, especially when you consider you know, a, a good-sized excavation pit is usually going to have right around half of that in their pit. Um, McClanahan really was our first choice. We had worked with them as we had developed the recycling machinery, and we really wanted to work with them on the dryer system. They came to the table, and it really was a collaboration. It was actually quite a fun project. Maybe in the middle there was a couple of hiccups that it wasn't, we wouldn't necessarily call it fun, but um, it worked in the end. So what have been the results of this? So a couple of them were quite surprising. Remember, we simply went into this and said, okay, 
Um, we need a way to cut costs on turning all of this sand, moving all of this sand. This does not fit with our business model, our family's beliefs. We accomplished that. Um, we're now getting sand dried to a much drier percentage. We're typically about 1% on moisture. We're doing that for under a, under a buck a ton pretty consistently. We have some changes coming that are going to bring that down a little further. But the real benefits were the ones that we had not seen coming. Um, at McClanahan's insistence, really, uh, we ended up with a dryer that basically pasteurizes the sand. We're using 160 degrees as our cutoff. At all times, the sand is exposed to that heat. And I, I think that was, that was a bit of a shocker. Um, we kind of thought maybe we were going to be wasting some heat doing that. There's really been a good payback to doing that. Um, I guess the other surprise was with the drying and the blowing system, we were already down to about a 1% organic matter on our manure coming out of, uh, on our sand coming out of that system. Uh, we've lowered that even further. So we've now got a really clean, really dry, pasteurized sand with very few organics. So what has been the offshoot of that? I guess uh, one of the things we did not see coming we were already very happy with where our treated group was. We were already very happy with our somatic cell milk quality. Um, it has plummeted. It has plummeted. So we, uh, this morning I talked with the herd manager. I was down here already. Um, he was happy to inform me that the usual, or it wasn't the usual day. Normally there's one or two animals in the treat group. This is on 7,200 cows milking. Today there was zero, which is really a number that we're hearing very, very, very often. And I really attribute that an awful lot to the beds where these girls are lying. We are actually going one step further, and I see there's a very progressive dairyman in here who's already taken this step, um, eliminating antibiotic usage. We're, we're truly considering taking that step since installing this dryer. We do think it's, it's achievable and it's real. Um, we have not upped our culling. Um, Obviously, uh, we're not in a growth mode right now, but we have gone to a strong beef herd production. And we're still in those high teens and low 20s for a cull rate. Um, that's opened up some opportunities, as I said, with the beef breeding and producing an awful lot of animals that have an awful lot of demand and, quite frankly, are, are pretty lucrative at this time. Results, again, you know, um, if you've got happy cows, it usually means a pretty happy farmer, and I've got to say we are pretty happy with it. Um, we don't have that love-hate relationship with sand anymore, which is nice. You know, we do believe it is absolutely vital underneath those cows. And we really like where this has gone. I think we as a dairy industry really need to start listening to our consumer, and I think we've done a pretty good job of it already. But there's no doubt about it. The consumer is, rightfully so, questioning our use of antibiotics. Um, a lot of the practices we do on a daily basis, I think we can manage around. I think this is a tool that will definitely help our family manage around some of those things. I guess um, just a shot, a beauty shot, I like to call this, of our cows on the rotary. You know, that really, really says it all. Um, I like clean cows. I like cows, period, but clean cows are or even better, this clean, dry sand um, really has a great effect on keeping those cows spotless. Um, production continues to be not quite where we want it to be, but um, pre-expansion, but we're right about 32.5, 33,000 rolling herd average, so that certainly hasn't dropped at all. It appears the comfort there is going to add some milk to that as we go forward. Um, as I said, looking ahead. Where are we going to go with this? I think there's a pretty bright future in technology like this. Um, you know, it's a pretty simple way to prevent. And that really is our family's vision, and I think it's, it's the vision of a lot of folks in the dairy industry that um, prevention is where it's at. As I said, I think this is a pretty important component of that. And with that, thank you for your time. do not know that. Okay, we will open it up for questions for Lee and for Rob. I don't know what the mic is. Is there any heat recovery from the exhaust gas or is that just exhaust? 
We have not done any heat recovery. Um, we've looked into it. Uh, really what we've really focused on, uh, we installed our first dryer here two years ago and uh, we were really worried about those types of things also. Hey, what is going to be the cost? How much fuel is going to be shot through this thing that isn't going to be used? And our approach, and I think one of the things we're going to be doing in the near future, is that we're going to oversize that dryer. Right now this dryer is located at our new dairy. Um, so our approach is going to be to lower fuel costs. That we're, we, We've currently got a hopper where we assemble the sand. We're only going to feed it 12 hours a day and we're going to actually oversize the dryer so that anytime the dryer is running we're going to have full flow of sand. So really the residual heat coming out of the back of that thing, um, because of all that vapor barrier, vapor moisture in there, in my mind it's not worth capturing for anything. I don't know if you guys feel differently. Yeah, it, it, there's potential to put to recycle some of that, that back in. We haven't done it. We wanted to keep the system as simple as possible. Um, but there is potential if, if we need to look at that to add a recycling to, to pull a portion of it back through. You think with uh, drying the sand other than uh, mastitis and cementic cell counts, you overall help like ammonia, for example, like moisture that was in the sand getting out in the bottom versus now you're removing it before it goes in the bottom, your overall health and ecology improve? <coughs> Yeah, I actually do feel there is that improvement. Um, you know, we've had so many changes going on at once that we can't quantify it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I feel it just makes sense. If you don't put moisture back into the environment, it's going to be a better environment. So yes, I, I do believe there's some health benefits. Rob, Rob's one slide showed 80 to 90 pounds of bedding per day and dry sand per day. It seems on the high side, you must be kicking a lot out. <laughs> uh, Rob, do you want to take that one? <laughs> uh, we are kicking a lot of sand out. I guess that was another surprise. Um, our sand use is high. It's, it's really high. Um, we're stocked pretty heavily at both dairies, uh, but there's no doubt about it. I think um, that sand use being high is probably part of the secret sauce. You know, it, uh, it allows a uh, clean bed at all times. And my thought process is, hey, you know, hey, if, if we can keep closing this loop for forever and ever, round and round, recyclable sand, um, so be it. If we go through an extra ton or two, it's well worth it. I'm saving the cow. Do you make up maybe a certain percentage, uh, you know, a week? In Sand you buy or how much you have to bring back? We went uh, consistent, I believe it was six years, without purchasing sand. Mm -hmm. um, remember, we were working off of stockpiles. There was some excess sand. But we also filled new barns and everything in there. No, we are not. Um, we're probably approaching, uh, if I had to guess, based upon what we see in the mineral lagoons, we're probably approaching that 97, 98% plus recapture. Very little back out in those lagoons. One thing that Lee, I don't know if Lee or Rob commented on this, but the other thing that we found, which I didn't realize this was going to happen, I think when we walked in the building and saw what was going on with the, the sand buggy coming in and getting filled with sand, but the dried sand doesn't leave the building. Um, they basically have no inventory outside, um, and the sand comes off the system and virtually goes right back into the barn. So there's not a whole lot of handling. It goes into a pile and it's ready to use. Yeah, and actually uh, uh, that is something that we're talking about. It's like, okay, what are those buggies going to look like in the future? <laughs> yeah. uh, this sand is a totally different characteristic. It's this dry, flowing um, sandbox sand. It's, it's kind of fun to play in. <laughs> so I know, um, you know we've really worked really hard on our conventional buggies for moving sand in and out, trying to get those things so that they don't leave a trail of sand all the way back and forth to the barns. Mm -hmm. I think that's our time card. I think that's our time card. Okay, if there's no other questions, Rob and I will be in the booth. Lee, of course, will be around. Um, before you leave, um, Laura in the back in the maroon shirt, um, she has uh, cards for you. So if you're attending this session and you want a free gift from McClanahan, there's an array of gifts for, and as a thank you for coming and listening today. 
And uh, your next on your agenda is lunch. Um, lunch is sponsored by BMO Harris Bank and Merck Animal Health. And that will be down in the exhibition hall. And that will be available for you following this session. So thank you.